Hey folks, Brad Reynolds here. Today we're going to talk about catfishing, jug fishing, and tournament jug fishing. Go figure. That's right. We're going to speak to Mr. Eddie Goodman, staff member with Cool Cats and Tug and Jug today. He is going to be on our show, the We Be Fishing. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're first timers, we appreciate you stopping by. If you're a regular, we love you. Thanks for coming back. Yep. Eddie Goodman's going to talk to us today. Tell us about what's going on out in Oklahoma. All right, folks. Well, we want to with or welcome, excuse me, Mr. Eddie Goodman to the show. Eddie is with Cool Cats and Tug and Judd. He is a staff member there. Eddie, welcome to our show, man, and, and thanks for coming on. Well, I'll tell you what, thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to this. I know we just had a tournament this last weekend. I was talking to the director, and he was thrilled to death about taking and having a podcast with you and I told him about how long I've been following you, and, and he said, well, let me know what goes on. So All I right. told him I would. All right. Now, the director, who is also the founder of Cool Cats, right, and Tug and Jug. Now, that's exactly. Michael Price. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. That Michael Price. We definitely got to give a big shout out to the guy that started it all there. <laughs> Uh, or, you know, you may lose that job. Yeah. <laughs> but we thank you for coming on and, and just be glad that, you know, he's got something down there uh, that, that he has kicked off that is is really uh, been a good thing. Now, you guys are in Oklahoma, correct? Yes, Oklahoma. And we fished uh, around the green country part of Oklahoma. And uh, we've taken, that's main, the main area right there. Okay. All right. And how long has these tournaments been going on? How many years have y'all done there? We started in June of 2016. Oh, okay. That's when the first tournament was. We started working on it before that, me and him and uh, getting things set up. But June, uh, June of 2016 was our first one. Nice. So it's been going a while and you've had, you sure, your good tournaments, your bad tournaments, your good you know, and they, your struggles, you work through some stuff, I'm sure, and, and change things as needed uh, to exactly. do that, to put out the best tournaments as possible. Now, the Cool Cats is kind of, I'm, I'm gathering, is like the head thing. And under that uh, category, now, you all have rod, rod and reel tournaments as well, right? Exactly. We have uh, what they call getting hooked, and that's this little room. That's what that falls under right there. Right. Good and then, yeah, we got two categories, getting hooked, and then we got tug and jugs. Right. We originally started out with just tug and jugs, and then uh, some people came to us and said, we like the way that you run your tournaments. Would you think about taking doing rod and reels? And then we picked it up. Awesome. That is fantastic. Well, I'm glad you can do that, and, they, and you can appeal to either group or – and I'm sure you've got some people out there that do both. Uh, they do maybe um, the job, job tournaments and, and rod and reels too. <laughs> yeah, you can take and fish. Like if you're out on one tournament, you can fish one, like the rod and reel one. And then the next time that you want to come out and you want to take and do the jug side, you can do the jug side. Just can't do both of them together. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, it's, for some of us, it's hard to get us off the water. And we're going to find a reason to be out there, whether we're using rods or whether we're going with the jugs. We're going to find a reason to be out on that water. Now, Cool Cats and the events that they do and the tug and jugs here, that's a family-friendly event. Is that right? Exactly. Because uh, like on our flyers and stuff that we pass out and we take and got some handout flyers, it says right here, tug and jugs of Oklahoma, Chuck. Cool Cat Tournaments, Tug Jugs of Oklahoma, turning jug fishing into a sport through family-oriented tournaments. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Now, you can, tournaments, is, you know, it's the thrill of the competition. You can have all this type of fun. I've done all kinds of different types of tournaments in my life and be, even been a director of a, a tournament circuit before. But that's a lot of fun. And the camaraderie you get with the people you meet out there uh, over a period of time is just fantastic. Now, 
the cool thing about this is you also get families involved. It's not just you meeting new people. It's your entire family meets other families possibly and and make you know and, and create bonds there and have friendships doing what they love out there competing in, in fishing. Yeah. yeah, because uh, we all try to camp in the same area, close to one another, mm -hmm. and then uh, the jug people put out their jugs on Friday evening. There's a weigh-in on Saturday and Sunday morning. And, and then, up well, we, just a little bit. Now, you said uh, mm -hmm. Friday night. You said Friday night you guys are uh, putting the jugs out. Yeah, Friday night. Put the jugs out. Correct. Okay. We have a sign in at Friday. The sign in on Friday afternoon. Set out our jugs, and then they fish all night. And there's a weigh in at 10 a.m. on Saturday and Sunday morning. And then when we're out, not out fishing, like I have a son that loves to cook, and uh, we'll take and cook up something in the evening time. And usually everybody passes through each other's camps. And tell stories on each other. <laughs> there you go. There's that friendship and, and all that good stuff uh, that you're building over time. And, and like I said, you guys have been doing this a while, so I'm sure you've you've created a lot of friendships over these last few years with these with these tournaments. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, we was just talking about it this last tournament that uh, a lot of us was just standing around afterwards, and and they all. We're just great teams and great family, and we take and we just a lot of them were saying they just love to come and visit with one another and get away from the hassle of the world, you know, and have our own little tournaments and, and have a lot of fun because that is our number one rule on the on when you look at our rules is to have fun. That's it. Yeah, and that's where it should be. Get out there and have fun. Yeah. Now you are fishing for money. But the whole thing is not so much the money. That's just the little extra bragging thing there. It's about the fun and the camaraderie and uh, spending time with family, right? Yeah, and get that little trophy. That way you can take and show it off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, you definitely want to have one of those. Now, during the calendar year, on your tournament circuit, your jugging circuit, let's say, how many events do you have per year for for your jugging? Usually, it's about six turn uh, six events. Six events. Usually three. Yeah, we usually start off in March, and we have three at the beginning, and then we close it down for the summertime because the water temperature is being too high and the oxygen levels being low. You get dead fish that way. We don't want that. Right. And yeah. then we You're start off. More in the spawn time period. So a lot of them are not biting that much. Yeah. I get you. Yeah. And then we pick it back up in uh, oh, uh, September. And then we usually have three more tournaments after that, plum to November. Oh, okay. All right. So you're, you, well, you just, so you just wrapped up. Um, we are in November right here. And the, the one you did this weekend was the final tournament of the year. Is that right? Yeah, for the uh, jug side. Now, the rod and reel side, they'll they'll be fishing uh, for the for the next couple of months, too, once oh. a month. Oh. Yeah. I got you. Now, there is a point standing system in this, right, uh, that you guys mm -hmm. do, kind of like NASCAR or something like that. Where you yeah. go to the events and and how you place and and even your participation probably earns you a certain number of points that moves you up in the point standings for the final tally at the end of the year, and we're looking for a champion here, right? A uh, jugging champion or or whatever, <laughs> or you get in first place, second place, or or whatever. But uh, again, that that all boils down to those bragging rights right there, doesn't it? Exactly, it sure does. And they get a special trophy for that. And we usually have a dinner in February. Uh -huh. And we take and have everybody get together, the rod and reels and the jug fishing teams, and we do the giving out the trophies. And we have a dinner. And uh, it's a big thing because, like, towards the end of this year, you know, the end of the season, them guys is always asking about, What's my points? What's my points? What's... <laughs> and we just sat back and said, well, you should be keeping track of them. Yeah, you need I'm to not keep keeping track of them for you. Yeah. 
and keep me in suspense. <laughs> right. I know, boy, I painstakingly, when I was a competitor in the martial arts, uh, I would painstakingly watch my my points. You know, so I knew right where I was. <laughs> when Ned's magazine would come out with the point stand, they were off, man. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, I need to call somebody or something. You know, let's get this right, you know. <laughs> But uh, all right. So now with your jugs, are there certain things like uh, what what baits are you allowed or is there certain baits that are not allowed in your jugging tournaments? What is primary? What we tell the guys is, what we tell the guys is get online, get your book, get the Oklahoma magazine and stuff, the, all the rules and read up on it and study it because, you know, you know, one fish might be okay for bait for one year, and then it might change. Right. But usually it's the shad, the perch, and stuff like that. And, and uh, like uh, myself, I fish with hot dogs. My yeah. my team name is Hot Dickety Dog. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's taking we keep a close eye on that so what it, they can it's fish pretty well open whatever is legal for the state of oklahoma yeah. with the fish yeah, the the there. yeah. okay exactly that, that's awesome now um how about the number of jugs now what are y'all do you, do you all okay. put a, different, a different stipulation on that or what the state allows all right if you go by oklahoma state the law says if with three people are on the boat as a team, that means 20 jugs apiece. Okay. But we can't do that because, man, we'd have jugs all over the lake. Yeah. So we had, we originally took and put it as 20 jugs for a team. Right, okay. And then we always had it in our rules about if we had more than 10 teams to show up, that we would take and cut it back to 10 yeah. So that way it doesn't look bad on us when we go out. Right. And then we had three months in a row that these guys were doing 10 jugs and me and the director sat down with them and laid out all the paperwork and everything in front of them and says, you guys are actually doing better with 10 jugs than what you were doing for 20 jugs per team. Right. And, uh, <laughs> Well, now that could said, well, it's a whole lot easier to keep up bait. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, but and that's the thing. You can watch it, watch those jugs more closely if you have fewer, and if you see something going on, you can go right over there and take care of it. You get that fish off the hook quickly, gives him let you know less time to to maybe struggle and get off the hook. Uh, but also, right. gives you a chance to get out there and refresh your baits more often. A lot of times. Uh, to make sure there's good scent in the water because you're putting fresh baits on there usually more often. You're checking them more uh, or quicker than if you did have 20, uh, let's say. Uh, and then again, if if, exactly. yeah. if if we come back and it's like, I, I'm not seeing two of my, now I'm spending more time because you got a greater chance of missing more jugs if you got more out there. And then you're running around trying to find your jugs and not maintaining your baits. You're not uh, checking these lines and stuff like that and, and making sure the fish didn't get off or or fresh baits on it because I'm trying to hunt down some missing jugs now because I put so many out you know it's it's just hard to keep up with but yeah now how about how about hooks Eddie now there's a lot of tournaments that have specifics on hooks now you guys may go with what is allowed by the state possibly or you may say you know there's a lot of people I myself, I you know, I'm a circle hook fan. Now, there's a lot of tournaments uh, that will say, okay, these these have to be circle hooks. They're inline circle hooks. You can't use offset circle hooks. Some tournaments will just say you can use circle hooks either way. But some tournaments allow you to use whatever you want to use. So, what is y'all's take on that one? Well, we let the guys make their own choices, you know, because over the years. I went with the J hook style for years and years and years. Yeah. And then I started watching the other guys and I started slowly going to the circle hooks, but no, we don't really have any law. If you, if you're comfortable and it works for you on the J hook or the circle hook, we, you can go either way. Me, myself, I prefer the circle hooks. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I do too. Like I said, I, I just feel like, uh, 
they're so much safer. Uh, now, obviously, the offset hook, offset hook's going to probably hook up more, uh, but uh, than than the inline. But some people say also that they're a, a greater risk for uh, a fish getting gut hooked and things like that. And I really don't find that to be the case. Uh, I think the the offset hooks do a fine job of doing what they're supposed to do, and majority of the time. They're catching that fish right in the corner of the mouth, right there, right. and uh, and it allows right there, us, yeah. it allows us to safely get those fish off, huh? and uh, and return them back into the water. Of course, most of what we do, of course, we're uh, doing it for entertainment fishing, so we're actually fishing only for about two three hours at a time, and we use a minimal number of jugs usually when we go. If we're doing a show. Rarely will we even put out 20 jugs. Now, we're allowed 50 in our state, but usually we won't put that many. If, and if I'm by myself, I'm going to put seven to, to 10 jugs. That's it. I don't want to be out there running by myself trying to control the boat, get the jugs, and, get, <laughs> and trying to get it on camera. You know, that becomes a whole exactly. other issue right there of getting it on All camera. Right. A whole different headache. Yeah, a to totally different. Uh, and, uh, so now we really, yeah. So so like I said, we really stress on uh, we really stress on about you know it's easier like what you were saying about ten jugs, it's easier to keep track of because we really stress that the guys has got a jug missing. We usually call each other on the phone. Hey, have you seen this? Thing? You would kind of well know who's got what markings on their jugs. Right. And we try to, we always try to get those jugs back in and, and have them accounted for because we don't want those fish out there staying on there for weeks at a time, you know. Right. That we want, you're gonna we want to preserve that. the history. Here. Right. And potentially you're used, losing a quality fish. You, you know, you could have a 50 pounder out mm -hmm. there that's hooked and now it's going to die uh, because we couldn't get to it, you know, and, uh, you know, now that happens as part of the sport. Those type things happen where whether it's even that 50 pounder that gets gut hooked uh, or or whatever. And and that is sad. But all we can do when we do try to, uh, to be out there and conscious of that when we're doing tournaments is we can just try to do our best to safely return these fish back to the water as quickly as we can. Or keep them in a live wells, well oxygenated with the proper temperature of water, and, and making sure that that's that's good. And uh, you know, but sometimes even your best attempts, you know, you're still going to lose a fish. And uh, yeah. but you know, it's it's so good that you've got that little tight community there uh, that that's even on the phone saying we're missing a jug. Help us find this jug. You know exactly, and, and getting now. I, you know, there's some people saying, "Why would I help him get that jug?" Because I know if it pulled over there, it's got a fish on it, and he, you know, what I'm saying he's going to weigh that in. But these guys are conscientious enough to know that it's important that that fish gets taken care of, and exactly, even at the cost that it may hit me on the points, it may hit me on a little cash, but that's not what we're totally here for. We're here to have fun. And let's take care of these fish. These fish are why we are having the fun. So exactly. Let's, so let's make sure we're taking care of those fish. You know, we want to keep the stress down on those fish, just like what you're saying. You know, about taking and making sure that they're well kept in the live wells and or you know, and then properly taken care of. So that way, whenever we release those fish to be caught another day, that's going to be my grandkids or their grandkids. Yep catching that same fish and having the same amount of fun. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what it's all about. We we get a lot of people asking, um, you know, why aren't you keeping this fish, that fish, so on and so forth? Because we want to return them back. We don't need to keep every fish we catch. Uh, and, you know, whether it's myself or when Miss Tammy is with me and we catch some fish, you know, rarely do we keep them. Now, sometimes we do. We do a, a charity event where we do a giveaway. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes yeah. we're going to keep some every now and then for ourselves or maybe a family member. Uh, but 99% of the time, as a rule, we're returning those fish back to the water as quickly and as safely as possible for the fish. 
uh, because we want to have good quality quality fisheries around this state. You know, so if we go to uh, a Kentucky or Barkley Lake, or if we're out, even in the Ohio out here, uh, we want to make sure those waters have quality fish in them. And uh, so not just for us, but for everybody else that likes to fish and for generations to come, you know, so that's, that's it's just like, you know, if you was raising cattle, if you were raising cattle, you want your gene pool to be good. Absolutely. And that's the same way I look at it as um, releasing that big fish because you really that genes that it has to you know produce more and then be able to take and keep that big fish alive and and reproduce you know that's mm -hmm. the that's the whole idea of it well and i love the idea and, and like i said i thought about it a while back and then came across and i said somebody else had this idea too but having tournament just fishing competitions uh you know i love it i love the idea and and you guys are doing it not just as individual tournaments I mean, you're doing it part of a circuit where people can get to come out and they meet each other, they have fun, and they become friends. And like you said, just at the campsite, they're telling stories on one another. You know, everybody has those. <laughs> those, those you uh, remember when? <laughs> yeah, when, when you fell out of the boat trying to get that fish in or, or whatever, or you got him right up there to the, the boat and then that line snap or, or, you know, we all have those. And that's what that's what the fun is about, right there. You know, making those exactly a great family fun. Well, Eddie, great family fun. Yeah, let me ask okay. you now. Now you guys have uh, a Facebook page, right? For your for Correct. your yes, we have a Facebook page. All right. Now, yes, so we do. We have it under Cool Cat Tournaments, and then we also have it under uh, Tug and Jugs and. And also as getting hooked, we just started posting some stuff on uh, YouTube. Okay, it hasn't got taken off yet, but okay. we're slowly working on that one. Well, you just gave a plug right there, folks. So they've <laughs> got something on YouTube. Check them yeah. out for sure. But the Cool Cats now that's that's spelled K O O L C A T S, right? Cool Cats tournaments, folks. Yeah. Make cool. sure you look that up. And then it's Tug T U G in the letter N. Just like on the sign behind the man right there, and Jug, J U G, right there, and that you can find them. Like I said, on Facebook, uh, you can look them up on YouTube, so on and so forth. And if somebody wants to get into your tournaments, I guess they can probably message you guys through that. Yes, uh, yeah, I have a lot of guys that personally P PM me on Messenger and stuff, ask all kind of questions because. I pretty well handle the jug fishing side. Michael, he he runs mainly with the, uh, the rod and reel side. Okay. And it kind of helps us keep us, you know, getting overloaded. But yes. yeah, I have a lot of people that call me up and ask me, and I'm, I'm more than happy to say if they personal message me and and uh, we get to talking, I'll send them my phone number. So instead of typing all this, just call me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Sometimes. And I'm, re uh, yeah. and I'm retired, so I can. So so they, more can, they can look you up on um, Tug and Jug on Facebook, right? Exactly. Friend you there, and then they could message you there, right? Uh, or now, do you have any other way that they might be able to contact you also, Eddie? Uh, or is that the primary contact uh, information you want to give today? Well, I, I usually talk to him a little bit on personal message and and then and get a feel for it but then if i'm comfortable i'll give them my phone number and stuff because like uh when we do a tournament when we're out on tournament we make sure that everybody's got everybody's phone numbers in case there's a problem you. You know, i ran out of gas or yep. the boat yep. won't start or something right. like that so we can and always I, be in contact with i'm them. sure that's happened more than once oh yeah <laughs> you're out on the water and you have boat trouble been there well, I've been there too. <laughs> well, I appreciate this so much. Now, now, so if they want to get involved with your tournaments, they can give you a call. What if they're exactly. thinking about they live in New Jersey and they're thinking about starting jug fishing tournaments? Would it be okay if they contacted you for some suggestions or advice on how to do that? I would be absolutely happy to talk to him about it because 
I think that we got a real good basis here because tournament fishing in Oklahoma for catfish is just really getting started. It's right. not as big as it is in your area, right. but you know, I feel like that we're at the start of it and we're going to be able to build up from here. But you know, the more that we get in contact with other people and be able to take and set up a good solid rulings, rules and a base, I right. think the better off it would be. Well, I'm glad we have gotten in touch with you, and we hope we can help you guys out there in Oklahoma by giving you a little bit more exposure here, some uh, some FaceTime here, and, and name recognition to your events there with the Cool Cats and Tug and Jug. Uh, and and we also, at the, same exactly. time, at the same time, we hopefully are promoting jug fishing because there's a lot more to it than just putting a hook on a line on a, a jug or something and throwing it out there. And uh, so hopefully more people will learn about this. They'll find out about it. Hey, chasing those jugs is a blast. If they've never done it, it they is. try it. And uh, it, it, like I I said, got my... there's a lot, lot more to it than people might think. But uh, when those things go under or they start bobbing up and down and bouncing or yeah. it, it looks like yeah. they're a shark and they're going through the water like this and you're, you've you got to go get them. <laughs> that, is a, that is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, you get that feel in your hand, you know, you could because you're actually holding that line. You feel that fish and you just adrenaline just runs through you. Oh, yeah. The strength of that fish. And sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes the smaller ones. Uh, give you a more fight than a big one sometimes. That, that, always, that never fails to it just surprise me that you're like, this is a three pound fish right here. And he felt like a, you get a 15, 20. And uh, you know, he, he just wasn't ready to give up. But, Eddie, I want to thank you so uh -huh. much for coming on the show. My goodness. Oh, I thank you very much. It. Totally appreciate it. And, and we hope. Tug and Jug and, and the Cool Cats events, we hope they continue for years and years to come because I know you guys are out there. You're teaching kids. You're teaching other people that never exactly. fished before uh, how to do this. You're keeping the sport alive. And I'm sure by doing that, that's making all the bait stores in the area and the, the guys that are selling hooks down the road and the PVC and the pool noodle, all these people are benefiting from this and you're helping the economy by doing this but the main thing the competitors are out there having fun learning something new making friends and making memories that are going to last exactly life. yeah and well, number one rule having fun having fun <laughs> i'm down for that and once again sir thank you so much and tell mr michael price we appreciate him allow you to come on and uh kind of representing uh, you know, Tug and Jug today and Cool Cats uh, with us today on the program. I, I really appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what, I appreciate what you're doing because I I really like your program because you really give the basics. You're not just only showing people catching fish, but you're giving out good information about how to do it. Why, do, why is it done this way? Because like I said, I've seen that episode where you talk about the history of jug fishing and that really caught my ear and really made me look at it and i appreciate everything that you're doing because you're a big help well thank you sir we appreciate it you tell mr price and all the people with tug and jug uh keep it up and good luck to all of them like i said i hope things keep going down there for a long time again folks mr eddie goodman if you have questions for him you can find him on facebook through tug and jug and he will answer your questions about tournaments and events down there or how to get your own tournament started or how to get involved with Tug and Jug there in Oklahoma. Eddie, once again, thanks a lot, sir. Well, that was an absolute blast interview, folks. Everybody knows I, I enjoy catfishing, period. Any kind of catfishing, I don't care whether it's limb lines or, or if we're using jugs or we're using rods or whatever, I enjoy it. And, uh, and you know, I really enjoy our jug fishing that we do. Uh, whether I'm doing it by myself or Miss Tammy's helping me out, jug fishing is a blast. And to talk to somebody that's in a group that is a, as passionate about it as I am is, is just cool when you can hook up with somebody doing that. Uh, but it, it's, 
It was great to be able to have Eddie on the show today. We want to thank Michael Price for allowing Eddie to step in and talk to us today on the show about what they're doing out there in Oklahoma with the Cool Cats event and the Tug and Jug and even their, their Rod and Reel uh, type tournaments out there too. Competition for fishing is a great thing to build camaraderie, so on and so forth. But when you make your event a family-oriented event, uh, it doesn't get any better. You're directly teaching your children or your grandchildren uh, about the sport that you love, and you're passing this down, right, and keeping this thing going, and, and also teaching them how important it is to uh, be conservation-minded when it comes to these fish. Treating these fish as gently as possible, and on many occasions, obviously, for these tournaments, they're returning these fish a lot of times, and keeping the quality fisheries alive out there in Oklahoma. This is just a wonderful thing, folks. Well, thank you guys for, again, stopping in to visit with us here on We Be Fishing. We're going to ask that you give us a thumbs up on this video. Uh, this, this video. I think uh, uh, Eddie definitely deserves it, uh, bringing us the information from way out there, out west, and we definitely, definitely appreciate it. Thanks again for stopping in. Hit the subscribe button as well, and you get the We Be Fishing notifications as well as BNT Cat Fishing Adventures. Folks, again, we'll see you next time when We Be Fishing. Stop back in and see us. Take care. Mm -hmm.